Right out the gate, I'm going to say that the narrative story that this game shipped with is bad. The story feels simultaneously both rushed and bogged down with unnecessary plots. The story characters, except for one, maybe two, are all forgettable, done before, or straight up laughable. You have a queen who is evil until you remove the spell being cast on her and return her back to normal. You have the random bad guys who all feel the same and look extremely menacing but have no real impact on the plot. Even Gollum shows up for a quest line that in concept makes sense but in presentation seems like a rehash of what the original source material gives us. Largely, you'll be introduced to a character and are supposed to care about them or their struggle but are given no reasons to actually do so. Even the main character, Talion, is bland and unlikable as he journeys to attempt to stop the henchmen of Sauron from gaining power. If I could skip 95% of the story mission in this game and just roam the world, I think that I would. There are a couple of characters who show promise and I'll circle back to them later on in this video. However, I'm not going to spend much more time talking about the overall narrative that exists. Now, despite everything I just said, I can't help but love Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor, and it's mainly for one reason, the Nemesis system. The Nemesis system is a network and visual representation of the hierarchy of the orcs. Orcs in this game are in different positions of power. There's the basic level, which will be the majority of enemies that you fight. Above them are captains. These orcs are given somewhat unique appearances such as face tattoos, helmets, or armor, along with power levels and traits. Traits offer them strengths and weaknesses. Strengths range from immunity to specific damage types, being able to kill wildlife quick, or maybe a flaming sword. The weaknesses can be things like fleeing if they see specific wildlife, or that they can be instantly killed by specific weapon finishers. Now above these captains are war chiefs, who have all of these traits, but usually better versions of them, or more of them, as well as having a selection of captains who follow and work for them. Now this whole system might sound pretty simple, and just like tiers of enemies. But the system really shines in seeing how you can interact with the orcs as well as how they can interact with each other. The orcs are constantly trying to increase in power, and this could be through a wildlife hunt or a feast for their followers. Letting these activities occur mean that the captain will gain in power and become more difficult to fight. Orcs can also fight amongst themselves, challenging other captains to duels or performing an execution as a show of strength. Again, if you do nothing in these conflicts, only one will survive and will be more powerful for it. If you get killed by a war chief or a captain, they will also increase in power. If you get killed by a lower orc, they will likely be promoted to a captain. They're gonna know my name from here to Mount Doom. This system makes the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay so fun and unique especially that as you're leveling up and gaining new abilities, it increases the number of options you can use to interact with the system. At the beginning of the game, you're only really given the option to gain intel from captains and or kill them. But in the second region, you have the ability to brand and control captains and war chiefs to work for you in secret. Think sleeper cells that activate when you press a button. This sets up scenarios where you can have War Chief's henchmen turn on him during an attack or have one of them actually challenge him for his position. As you're about to see, I went around and branded, controlled each of this War Chief's henchmen. And then when I was finally ready, I had one of them challenge him to his position and then I turned them all against him. What is the meaning of this destruction? 
Where are we? You don't like to get your hands dirty. Me? I love it. Here are my wills. Super. You fool. Yeah. Die now! The Nemesis system creates meaningful relations with basically generic enemies, which is something that many games really struggle to do. One cool feature is that any orc you kill has the potential to become a nemesis who can reappear and survive being killed. This creates an even deeper relationship as you might have an orc coming back to haunt you throughout the game. This happened to me with an orc by the name of Luga, the Berserker Master. I killed him multiple times and he kept coming back. I'd issue death threats against him, which would mean I would get rarer drops from him at the cost of him increasing in power. Occasionally, he'd even kill me too, which would make him even stronger. Eventually, he reached the role as a legendary captain. Our encounters were usually wild. Here's one such that felt like a scene out of a movie. Greywalker! Remember me? You left me for dead. You've got about five minutes left to regret it. It's my time! So thick skulls, you try it again! Die, world! Clear off, you're useless! We've been betrayed! I won't be tricked by that! Bullets to this! I will have more revenge next time! Time for murder! ends your command. Again, what makes this interaction so cool is that it's completely random. It could have been any of the other orc captains I'd killed, each with their own set of unique strengths and weaknesses. And so this particular encounter might have played out very differently depending on the states of those other orcs. This whole system is made better by the great combat mechanics. The sword combat is based off of the Batman Arkham games combat system called the free flow combat and it works just as well here as you effortlessly glide between whichever enemy you're attacking. The stealth gameplay is also pretty good and I always welcome stealth systems in games. At the beginning of this video, I talked about how bad the story narrative was, and I mentioned there were a few characters who were good. The first is Calabrimbar, the elf spirit you have inside of you. His story is actually interesting, and for the most part, well acted. However, I think the whole regaining his memory quest line 
was a little unnecessary, and it would have been more impactful for him to be slowly informing Talion of who he was as you played through the game. Now, for the best character in the game, I want you to watch this scene and tell me you don't have a smile on your face. Ranger! Come close if you want the black hand. Those slave scum are pouring poison in your ear. Oh, but you cut these ropes. Right back, I'll tell you everything. Hmm. Now, what would you know that all these other dead orcs did? Go ahead, you bastard! Do it! I'll die, and you'll know nothing! Maybe I'll grant your request. End your miserable life. No, 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 no. I was just a... Look, those slaves are no match for the orc army. Their schemes as rotten as barrel fish. But Ratbag can teach you the ways of the orc. Ratbag can make your plan work. Hmm. We're going to find out what you know. This orc's name is Ratbag, and he is hands down the best character in the game. He is part of the story for the first region, and is the orc you push through the nemesis system to become a captain, but also as your spy. He is funny and entertaining whenever he is on screen, and should have been given more screen time as far as I'm concerned. He was well written and acted, and I was genuinely sad when he was just nonchalantly killed, although it is a fitting end to his character arc of always biting off more than he could chew. Overall, I like the core gameplay aspects of this game. I think the developers should have replaced the villains with orc characters because the orcs just ooze personality whenever they're on screen. And having that be the force that you were trying to stop could have been more personal and have more potential. Instead, it feels like the developers felt they needed to somehow connect their story to the original works, otherwise people wouldn't like it. I know there is a sequel, and I would like to play it at some point, if only to see what the developers have evolved the Nemesis system into.